Hey, it's Pete Mundo, and this podcast is brought to you by our friends at Volkswagen of Lee's Summit. Go check them out today just off I-470 and Colburn Road, or start shopping at VWLeeSummit.com. Well, we have talked to and heard from uh, plenty of uh, veterans on this show over the last couple of weeks, either as callers or guests, and gotten different angles on this. But one angle that we have not touched on yet is is uh, the mental health side of what's gone on the last three weeks in Afghanistan and what the impact is, not just for those troops who have been overseas and are now coming home and have seen and dealt with the last three weeks as they've unfolded, but also those back here who have been a part of what's gone on the last 20 years uh, in the Middle East and what their feelings are and what their what their emotions are and what's going on there. And we will come on and say hello to... Adam Majors, he is a uh, psychotherapist here in Kansas City. He's an Iraq War veteran, and he's also uh, in charge of the curriculum, the curriculum architect at the Battle Within, an organization right here in Kansas City that we work pretty closely with, and uh, they're helping veterans and first responders deal with their PTSD and other issues as well. Adam, good morning. Uh, I I just want to give you the floor to start and ask you in terms of uh, what the last month or so has been like for you and what you guys have been dealing with within the battle within and helping people uh, deal with the last few weeks. Good morning. Uh, Thanks for having us back. uh, And thanks for making the space for us to talk about this. I think it's really important right now. Um, So for me personally, over the last few weeks, it's, it's been pretty crazy. I've kind of been involved on two fronts and one has been in helping a family get out of Afghanistan and helping uh, fellow veterans get get uh, folks that they know on the ground out of Afghanistan. And then on the other front, it's been working as a psychotherapist, running groups with Afghanistan veterans. And then, of course, also talking to friends of mine who fought in Afghanistan, my little brother who fought in Afghanistan. Um, and it's been a really, really difficult time for folks. This has been uh, a very frustrating and overwhelming time. And it's bringing a lot back, even for veterans who didn't fight in Afghanistan, even veterans who fought in Iraq. This is bringing a lot back for them, too. So uh, it's been a hell of a couple of weeks. Now, what um, when you say that it's bringing things back, just out of curiosity, what, what does that mean for those of us who, who did not serve, who don't understand? What, what comes back exactly? Is it the emotions, is it the memories, the good, and also the, the, the really bad? What, what is coming back? Well, one of the terrible realities of psychological trauma is that whenever something that uh, is associated with your original trauma uh, comes back to find you, you know, it might be an image, it might be uh, a video clip of something you see, it might be a sight or a smell, uh, anything like that can bring your trauma back. And, and when it comes back, it's not just uh, one part of it, usually you relive it. Uh, and in its entirety, and, and the full emotional um, uh, toll that 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 uh, trauma takes uh, is back there with you in the present. So, you know, just a few days ago, I was working with uh, one of my Iraq veterans uh, in psychotherapy session, and and when the attack happened last Thursday at uh, the Abbey Gate there at the Kabul airport. It brought brought back uh, an instance when he was in Iraq over a decade ago, where his platoon was one of the first platoons to show up on the scene after a suicide bomber had killed over 200 people in a market in Iraq. And he was walking me through what that was like and how horrible it was. And so it's things like that. I've heard uh, more stories than I can count these last few weeks. And, you know, me personally being in Iraq, uh, having, having fought there, it brought things like that back for me too. So this is a, a really, really intense time to be watching all this unfold. Um, it's It's been pretty difficult for folks. Adam Majors joining us, a psychotherapist here in town, heavily involved with the Battle Within, a, a group in Kansas City that is helping veterans and first responders on their journey dealing with uh, PTSD. So, Adam, you're holding, you mentioned support groups. Uh, what, for people that maybe haven't gotten involved or, or want to get involved, what is what is that process like for them right now? Well, first off, the, the most uh, most important thing, we're going to keep running these groups for Afghanistan veterans, and we're going to expand it to help all veterans uh, who may need support right now. But we're going to run those as long as uh, there's demand. So if you go to our Facebook page, which you can find that, uh, just type in The Battle Within or go to our website, thebattlewithin.org, uh, and then you can find the Facebook link there. Go to our Facebook page, and you're going to see a flyer with a link to sign up. 
So just use the sign up link. You can use it. Um, Use that, and we'll reach out to you, get in touch, and give you the full details about the group. Uh, we're, our next one's going to be uh, next Monday on the 6th from 4.30 to 6 p.m., and uh, it's, I think people are getting a lot out of it, you know, just to, to have a chance to get things off their chest and to know that they're not alone. You know, so this this is a really important time to process, and and we don't want to miss it when these when these kinds of moments come around. It's really important to deal with it when it's right there in your face. How much, Adam? And this is anecdotal, I guess, but how much did last Thursday's attack really uh, take these issues that were, I'm sure, happening just with the withdrawal and how this had all been playing out? It was already there, I'm sure, in many ways, anyway, before last Thursday, but. Was last Thursday really a, a breaking point as well in, in, in uh, making these, these issues even worse for many folks? And if, if so, uh, what was the big driver of that? Yeah, I think that this is actually, a, a, it was a very unique moment in uh, the history of this war. And for all of us who fought in the global war on terror, whether in Afghanistan or in Iraq, that a lot of us have spent, you know, to, you know, uh, half of our life or, uh, you know, a considerable portion of our life um, watching this thing or being part of it on some level. And so to see the, the uh, slow motion train wreck that was the Taliban taking over Afghanistan was really painful. So you have all these veterans who are watching this tragedy unfold and thinking, this can't get worse, this can't get worse. And then when we heard the reports uh, that there was intelligence that, that ISIS-K was planning the attack, everybody's, you know, on pins and needles thinking, please don't let this happen. You know, and then at the same time, knowing if you, if you fought in this war, you know there's a pretty darn good chance that the worst is going to come to pass. And so when it did, I think that that was just, um, it, it was not just, you know, the blast on the ground, but the explosion that tore through people's hearts. Mm-hmm. So all the stuff that they might have tried to help hold at bay, you know, since they were fought in Afghanistan or Iraq, I think it all came erupting out in that moment. And how much is there a feeling, Adam, that, you know, the last 20 years are for not considering uh, the Taliban is now running the entire country? How, how much is that uh, part of the conversation? How do you how do you make sure that uh, veterans who did risk their lives and, and uh, deal with all this over the last two decades don't have some of those feelings based on where we're at right now in the world stage? You know, I, I do hear that a lot. And I'd say I kind of hear um, there, there's two narratives and that when we're processing trauma, that, that the meaning um, that these kinds of things has for you can change over time. But I do hear from a lot of veterans right now that they feel like it was all for nothing, that their buddies died for nothing. I, I do hear that. And then I also hear veterans who say, you know, we're so glad that we went, you know, that, that we gave those folks a, a taste of freedom for 20 years, that there were little girls uh, who, who are now women who got to grow up and become doctors. They got to go to school to, you know, they got to go to higher education. Um, they experienced things that they never would have otherwise. There were poets who could write their poetry. There were, there were artists and musicians who had a life they never would have had if the Taliban would have been, been there the whole time running the show. So I also hear from veterans that they're, they're glad that they sacrificed, you know, to, to give these folks a chance. So I hear, I hear both things and, and that, uh, you know, I just try to give everyone permission to be wherever they are right now and not talk them out of it. Mm-hmm. Adam, what about, uh, you know, I've, I've heard from a lot of uh, people who are, veterans either privately or on the show and and they have just mu- just as much concern about the allies uh, the afghans who fought alongside of us who were and have been left behind and who knows what their fate is obviously it's uh it's in doubt right now how much is that part of the uh, trauma process that people are dealing with right now knowing that there are people and afghanis who they fought alongside who fought on behalf of the safety and freedom of this country and the world who now don't know what their future is going to be. Yeah, this is another important part of it. And for anyone who is already wrestling with any kind of moral injury, um, that, that this just kind of adds to it, you know, that, that when um, you, a, a lot of these interpreters, I mean, veterans see them as their, 
their brother. You know, my own interpreter in Iraq, uh, that guy was responsible for saving our lives probably on a number of occasions. There were times where we were able to talk to people and find out that our enemy had set up an ambush for us or that they'd emplaced an EFP in a certain location where we could find it or an IED. And so those interpreters have a very, very special place in our heart. And it is uh, no light matter that uh, they were left behind, you know, or that they were having to be rescued in the fashion that they were. So this is this is no um, minor deal to us. We take this very seriously, especially in a community where no one left behind is, um, you know, it's 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 a motto that has real meaning. You know, it's more than a motto. It's it's our promise to one another. And so uh, for our interpreters, you know, this, this breaks our hearts. You know, I, I think any veteran who, who is close to their interpreter is upset that this went down the way it did and find it unacceptable. But, you know, at the same time, thank goodness we got so many of them out of there. And, and uh, to anyone who did get left behind, uh, you know, I hate it for them. I wish that there was a way that we could go in and get them out. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we don't have a time machine. We can't go back. And, and um, you know, unfortunately, the the worst will come to pass for some of them, and it shouldn't have happened. It didn't have to happen this way. Adam Majors, an Iraq War veteran, a psychotherapist, clinical manager at the Battle Within right here in Kansas City. The, uh, the, the groups that you guys are hosting uh, for people is continuing. The group therapy sessions are continuing. Uh, you can go to the Facebook page, search the Battle Within, uh, or you can email Adam directly, adam at thebattlewithin.org. Uh, adam, anything else people need to know about how to get involved here right now? Well, I would just say if you have a veteran in their life, no matter where they fought, uh, give them space to talk. Give them, give them uh, some time and space to express what they're feeling. Don't try to talk them out of anything. Just be there for them. This is a really critical time. Um, so lean in uh, psychologically, emotionally. Be there with them in every way that you can. Adam, thanks for all you do. Can't uh, can't thank you enough. Really appreciate the time. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. You bet. Adam Majors.